Yes. Folks, we're going to get started. You'd like to take your seats, please? Okay, we want to welcome everybody to Scenic Brookside, historic Scenic Brookside, and welcome uh, you folks here. We've got a nice uh, group of people here at the Brookside Community Center, and also welcome our many uh, listeners and viewers uh, online. Uh, this is the first time we're trying a in-person slash Zoom format, so uh, hopefully we're going to get it right. Hopefully... Uh, this will be um, a good for, uh, situation that we'll be use again in the future. You folks, please let me know how we do. Um, now, one of the few things we didn't get worked out is that um, um, we don't have a, a direct link for the audio. So uh, you folks in the audience, if you would try to keep the, the noise down, because that is going to go out to um, the folks who are, are zooming in with us. So... Um, and keep questions in, uh, John will give his presentations and we'll save questions to the end. There'll be some questions coming in from folks um, online and uh, folks who have questions here can just raise their hands, please. So um, first of all, I wanna thank Pat Zimmerman who was supposed to be here. Pat Zimmerman, as Pat is a, a local resident and uh, she was the person who um, suggested that we meet here and uh, help us, helped us make the arrangements. And uh, hopefully uh, everyone will enjoy this new space. Now this is necessarily permanent space. We were unable to meet in our usual location at the, uh, um, at the cultural center, um, state uh, county, county uh, parks uh, is not making that space available for the rest of this year. So we'll be um, possibly back here again in November and uh, hopefully more folks will be able to join us. So um, we wanna hear from you folks, um, if you like this location and this arrangement. Um, and these meetings are all about uh, uh, you, you, you folks, you members. Um, do we have any new members uh, here with us? Okay, no, not seeing any. Well, someone, if we have new members joining us online, welcome. Uh, we're glad to have you. Um, events going on. To In person, okay. Anybody here for the first time? Gigi? Okay, folks back there. Glad to meet you. Glad to have you here. Um, get back to events. Waterloo Canal Day tomorrow. Tomorrow at Waterloo Village. Um, I know Tim has been sending out uh, ads, and we're going to have you know quite a day with 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 crafters and blacksmiths and live music, and uh, the church ladies are going to be serving food. Um, so we're going to have a really good, exciting day. The only disappointment is we're not going to be able to get our Canal boat in the water uh, is unavoidable situation. So that's going to be one disappointment. But other than that, um, I think we're going to have very good uh, weather. And we've got some new exhibits in, uh, in, in the boat exhibit. So please come and join us from 10 to 4 um, up at Waterloo. Other events that are coming up are going to be in, uh, in Booten for Booten Day on September the 26th. We're going to be at uh, Lake Epac on Block Party on the 2nd of October and at the Fall Festival on the Green and Morris Town, um, October 3rd. So this is, every, everything is coming together in the fall this year. So um, COVID has, um, has sort of jammed our schedule together. So, um, but we're trying to keep up with uh, uh, all the good opportunities that we have to be out with the public. Um, Mars Canal Greenway activities this uh, summer are, are extensive. I can't even go through them all uh, at this time, but our ad in the uh, uh, Skylands Magazine uh, will, will be uh, out this fall. Uh, again, explore the Mars Canal Greenway. So hopefully lots of people will be seeing that ad. And it's featuring the, um, the lock uh, restoration project in Wharton. Now, um, I don't know if many of you people have visited Wharton. I can't get our 
friends on the line can't raise their hands, but uh, the lock in U Force Park in Wharton is uh, the lock project is is coming to a a, a final uh, conclusion with the re a complete restoration of the lock tender's house and the the, the restoration of the whole uh, site. Um, the, the, Basically, the, the, the whole site plan of the lock is going to be put back together again, and the contractor is telling us that uh, it should be finished by the end of this year. So um, we've been trying to visit there every week and see uh, the, the site uh, virtually rise from the rubble. Um, the, the, the lock has been, uh, the lock stonework has been completed for several years now, but not all of the operating equipment had yet been installed. So that's gonna be completed this year as well. So uh, the lock uh, will be in operating condition and the uh, house will be um, ready for, um, for interpretation next year. And uh, we've been talking with uh, John Manna and with the borough of Wharton about being heavily involved in that. And one thing that's gonna require is volunteers to help bring that back to life. So hopefully some of you folks will contact me and get out a list of people uh, to be involved in bringing the lock site um, and all of its, uh, its attributes back to life next year. Lock Tender's house, the whole, the whole site will be, be working. Um, Let's see. We've been busy um, in Lincoln Park. We've donated some sign work and a new parking lot has been uh, completed at the uh, Plane 10. Uh, Lester, the um, site restoration at uh, Incline Plane 2 East in Ledgewood is scheduled to begin later this fall and continue on to, the, uh, to uh, next year. And um, let's see. And also, Plane one in Shippenport has gotten a, uh, um, a planning grant and um, new property acquisition is going on there. And so that um, is gonna be getting, uh, uh, beginning next year. So um, uh, plane one, plane one, two, okay. Uh, tonight we've got John Prytow, and he's going to be talking about uh, the Barbara Colada collection. You know, um, he has been doing a lot of work on on archives. Uh, he's been heading up uh, a project, and he has created a, uh, um, a document of, of, of practices, a manual, and uh, uh, he and I have been going through our collections, and uh, we have acquired the latest software that will allow us to. Uh, create a, a searchable database and put uh, a, a lot uh, of our collections uh, online. And uh, as part of that, uh, we've been exploring our many collections. And so John has chosen the Colada collection uh, as a place to start. And I think that you will enjoy seeing what he's done, brought up uh, many pictures and items and documents that uh, I don't think any of you folks have ever seen before. And so I'm sure that you will um, enjoy John's show. So I'm going to hand this over to him. Good evening. Uh, my name is John Prito. I'm, as Joe said, I'm with the Canal Society. Uh, I'm thrilled to be giving this presentation. Uh, and it's a special one because it really is a glimpse into our archives, which, as Joe has mentioned, um, I've been working on. And we have been exploring. Uh, the piece that you're seeing here is uh, a nice piece of artwork <clears throat> by a fellow named uh, Olin Voigt, or Vogt, who also was a photographer. And you'll see some of his pictures later on. OK, so our presentation is called Treasures from the Archives. Uh, they are select photos from the Collada collection. Now, this is a special picture because I have never seen a picture of Barbara Collada, <clears throat> despite that, the fact that she's been involved in so many things. I did a deep research uh, project, mini project, and I found this, and I believe that was from her later college days. And there's her signature. So this is all the way back in roughly 1961. 
Okay, so the collection itself was purchased by the society in 1996. Uh, and of course you have photographs of the Mars Canal, which we'll see, uh, negatives, maps, notes, even a manuscript <clears throat> and some books and uh, various pamphlets. Now, the way I set this up was the photos of the Mars Canal are being shown from west to east. Um, and a lot of them do show a time period after the canal was abandoned in the 20s. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the photographs do not have dates. Uh, and they've been in our archives for about 25 years. And as Joe said, many of which nobody has have seen or, or only seen a few. So we hope you enjoy the, the slideshow. Okay, starting all the way on the Western Terminus in uh, Phillipsburg, some of the photos do have little tags on them, unfortunately. First plane that it, the canal sees is plane 11 West in Phillipsburg, and this is a, a nice view. Okay, here's a, a capture of the canal uh, boat under Greens Bridge, which carried the Lehigh Valley Railroad in Phillipsburg, 1900. Yeah. Uh, another couple of boats near Green Greens Bridge in Phillipsburg, 1899. This one has an exact date, 1897. There's another canal boat in Phillipsburg. Okay, the long Plain 10 West in La Pecong. The view looking up. Here was a bridge at the foot of uh, Plain 9W in Port Warren. This is, of course, after abandonment, 1936, but the bridge seems to be in decent shape. Lock 7 West, New Village. This canal boat was named Reindeer, 1900. And canal uh, <clears throat> view at Broadway. I love that name. Very bucolic. Stewartsville. Now, this is the M. Dowling store. I'm not familiar with that, but one of the many stores along the canal, and you can see the boom near center frame. Okay, the aqueduct with the canal over the arch. Post abandonment, 1937, Bowerstown, which I think is Washington Township. Another great name, canal at uh, Brass Castle. Okay, here's the uh, foot of uh, Plain 7 West in Washington. It's a little, some of the pictures are a little faded, but you can still see the plane tracks. Nice sweeping view of the canal at Port Colden. Now this I'm led to believe was an unusual setup for the flume. They said it uh, was after a 1901 fire where they had to rebuild it. So it looked a little bit different afterward. Now the Mayberry, this has this, uh, I did a little research on this one. <clears throat> the wheat cutter. Now this I think was put together by a guy named Bill Mayberry, who was a supervisor on the canal. And he knew there was a problem with the canal with the weeds. So he, had, he built something on his own <clears throat> to help uh, try and cut them down. So this is it here. We, we don't know where or what year. Rockport, post abandonment. A little bit of the canal still there. And the famous Katie Kellogg canal boat, which I think was a pay boat. 
and may have been an inspection boat as well. There's some folks here doing some fishing. Hackettstown. Uh, this is post abandonment with the point of view from the canal bed. Uh, a warehouse and tavern in Port Murray. Okay, so this is Starport, <clears throat> 1908. You could see it was taken by the aforementioned Olin Voigt or OFV. You could see his initials there. He had nice photographs that were very clear. He must have had good equipment. Lock four west, <clears throat> Guinea Hollow, not too long after abandonment. You see some of the gear, the gearing there. Lock three west in Waterloo. Now <clears throat> the note on the back said this is what they called a hipped boat, which said it was built up around the hold so it could carry more coal. And the people identified on the boat were Bill Parlman and Alice Peer, I guess from the famous Peer family, 1908. Okay, uh, another post abandonment in Waterloo, <clears throat> remains of the canal. And Plain Four West, we've seen pictures of that, but this is post abandonment. You can see the path where the tracks were. <clears throat> and of course, Smith's store. Now, I think we've seen some pictures of Smith's store, but this particular one <clears throat> had a boat right in front, 1908. And I think it's also Voigt, his picture. Berto's Tavern in Waterloo, <clears throat> still standing, 1937. And an old grist mill at the foot of uh, 4W. Again, post abandonment, 1937. And the Plane House at uh, Plain Four West in Waterloo. <clears throat> looking a little worse for wear, but still standing, 1941. Uh, and this is another uh, voyage picture, Plane 3 West in Mount Olive. This has a nice view looking down. Okay, this is a level of canal between Plane 3W and Lock 2W. <clears throat> Mount Olive Stanhope border. Post abandonment, still some water in there. Uh, this is near Plain 2W in Stanhope, post abandonment. You can see the wash hanging out on the line. Okay, the canal at uh, Stanhope, summit of Plain 2 West. Uh, they say it's a former grist mill. Okay, the canal level between Plain 2W and Lock 1W in Stanhope, post abandonment. Foot of Plain 1 West, uh, Port Morris. Now, of course, it's looking out onto Lake Muskinekong. Nice view looking down. Uh, you could see the, uh, tr the inclined plane and the towpath with Lake Muskinekong in a distance. Okay, this is up at uh, Lake Apacon, the Brooklyn Lock, turbine and, uh, and house. And here's the water wheel that they uh, put up there for display. It's from Plane 3 East and uh, preserved at Lake Apacon. Uh, 
Okay, so now we move to the east side. Drakesville, plane two, 1940. This I thought was interesting. This is near plane two east in Drakesville, the Rock Spring Hotel. I've never heard of that. 1912, so the canal was still in operation. Summit of Plane 3 East, Ledgewood, post abandonment, 1940. Lock 1 East, Ledgewood. And the famous hole in a wall with the canal overhead in Ledgewood. Plane 4 East and Wharton. Now, if you'll note, it's written on the back of the photo. This is a Voigt photo. It's carrying a wagon as part of the cargo. Lock 2 East in Wharton, Captain George Smith with his mule team, 1897. Plane 5 in Wharton. The canal boat alert. So this is the canal near Wharton, not sure where exactly, but post abandonment. You can see the towpath. Lock 3 East, Port Oram and Dover, 1908. <clears throat> Lock 4 East, now we're in Dover, 1904. And this is the uh, infamous train wreck in Dover in 1905. I don't have too many details on that, but quite a catastrophe. So this is somewhere below Lock 4 East, also a picture by Voigt, 19, 1898. Ah, thank you. The overflow at the canal basin at Dover, 1905. Now these were uh, interesting pictures, <clears throat> post, just post abandonment. You can see some of the writing scripted in here. 1924, this happens to be in Dover. Plain six east in Rockaway, also by Voigt. This is near Plane 6 E in Rockaway uh, at what they call Jackson Lumber, 1912. And here's the Mudscow at Lock 8 East in Denville. And I believe that's Pierce Store. Okay, Lock 9 East, Powerville. Heading east, Lock 10 East in Powerville, 1890, a couple of canoers. This one I liked. Everyone has a hat on. Canal over the Rockaway River near, near Lock 11 in um, Powerville, 1890. See the flags. <laughs> Boonton, Lock 12 East. This one you may have seen. Uh, this is one view of uh, the summit of Plain 7 East in Boonton. This what I thought was interesting. Wheel pits at the summit of Plain 7 East 
in Booton on 1942. So it had been sitting there for quite a while. Lock 13 in Booton post abandonment. <clears throat> Now this fellow is named William Farrand, lock tender at lock 13 East in, this is 1937. I assume he was the last one. So I don't know whether he was still living here or whether he just came back to visit, <laughs> but there he is. <laughs> Another looks like vote picture, uh, the canal vote pioneer uh, at the foot of plane eight East in Montville. And the basin near there, canal boat number 771, 1905. Okay, Bill McCulloch's mules, uh, plane nine east in Montville, photo by Voigt with the feed bag. Here's another one of those pictures. Now these pictures were apparently the backfilling was done right away. Uh, Plain nine east in Montville. You could see the pile near the middle. <clears throat> Some areas, I guess they didn't waste much time. That's a nice bucolic view at Montville. the bottom of Plain 10 East in uh, Lincoln Park. You can see the house up top, 1920. Lock 14 East in Lincoln Park. Uh, this is another distant view of Lock 14 East <clears throat> in Lincoln Park, but this is the lock is somewhere over there under the arrow. It's the start of the 17 mile level east of Bloomfield. Another picture with some backfilling work. Ryerson Bridge over the canal in Mountain View. It's actually, I think, Lincoln Park, right on the border, 1924. You can see all of, of it's all filled in. Brickyard in Mountain View. I think they did a lot of business, 1912. Uh, the Pompton Feeder and DL and W Lift Bridge, Mountain View, 1912. The guard lock at, up at Pompton Plains. You can see the mechanism here on top. Uh, it's the Erie Railroad crossing at Mountain View near the Pompton feeder. And I think you could see the aqueduct in the distance. July 3rd, 1912. Here's the aqueduct. Now this was after a flood in 1924. So I don't know how, how the, uh, high the um, river got, but I assume it got pretty high. All right, so now we're by Little Falls and Totowa, not too far from the Little Falls Aqueduct. This place is right by the now what's now the Pasig Valley Water property. And of course, there's the aqueduct. Now this one is an 1890. And you can see the wood frame on the top. Now this was another aqueduct in Little Falls over the Peckman River, a little further down. Um, not much left, 1940. Uh, now we're in West Patterson, uh, Becker's Farm, 1939. You could see just a little bit <coughs> of the canal bed watered. 
And there was an overflow gate in West Patterson. And that's it. Squirrelwood Road in Patterson, which is right by Route 80. Some swimmers in there. Another bucolic view of uh, the canal in Patterson. So we've turned the corner and heading down into Clifton. This one is near Allwood Road, the present day Allwood Road. Again, you can still see the ditch and um, maybe a little water, 1941. Okay, everyone knows Cheap Josie's. This is the basin near the blacksmith shop nearby. And here's the shoe shop right nearby in Clifton. Now, Lotz's farm <clears throat> is the canal here. I'm led to believe that that was a dairy farm. I don't know how long that was, was there. I think it was there till the 50s. So I don't know when this picture was. Okay, so we've uh, gone into S now. We're in uh, Bloom. 1920. Yeah. I'll step back a little. Good. Working testing. All right. That, that seems to be a little better. Uh, Brookdale, 1912. This is That seems to have worked. Thank you, Ken and Jeff. Okay, back to Brookdale and uh, Bloomfield 1912. <clears throat> I like this picture. Now this is on the border. I don't know if uh, people know this area, East Passaic Avenue. It's on the border of Nutley and Bloomfield. This is on the Nutley side, I believe. This is just on top of Plain 11 East, <clears throat> 1912. I found this one. This is a Mr. James Shears and his wife, 1915. He supposedly was the last plane tender uh, at Plane 11E in Bloomfield. Uh, here's a picture of unloading coal. <clears throat> the bottom of Plane 11, there was the old Oaks Mill, the woolen mill. So here's a boat unloading coal just south of the plane. Berkeley Avenue Bridge, which they've since replaced twice since then, <clears throat> 1922 and then 2017. It spanned both the Second River and the canal. So a little bit of the canal went through Belleville. <clears throat> this is the um, from the point of view of the canal, looking out at the Soho Copper Works. Uh, unloading coal at the Hoot and Coco. <clears throat> now this is in North Newark by Branchbrook Park. 
by around Fifth Street, just off the edge of the park, 1912. And one of my favorites, the electric plane <clears throat> at Orange Street near the basin in 1912 in Newark. So the canal boats would come up, go over the plane, electrically powered, over the tracks, and back down into the canal on the other side. <clears throat> Okay, post abandonment, 1928. This is lock 16. <clears throat> Looks way different than the pictures when it was still operating. This is up by NJIT and Rutgers. Okay, plane 12 East <clears throat> in ruins, 1928. Here was the water flume for the, uh, for the powerhouse. Now, I'm told that of all the powerhouse flumes along the Morris Canal, this is the only one that was circular. All the other ones were square. <clears throat> okay, the bottom of Plain 12 East, you can see by now it's more or less a dump. But you can see how tight it was in between the buildings. Okay, so I'm a little excited about this one because when I first got involved with the society and the archives and the website, the, the statement always was, we don't have a picture of Lock 18 East. And we found one. So <clears throat> the canal came down into downtown Newark, and there was a fork right around here. So it forked out to the Passaic at Lock 18, and then went a little bit further uh, toward Lock 17, or just above, and then on its way into uh, Ironbound. But this is 1940. <clears throat> Lock 19 East, this is further down into Ironbound. And Lock 20, which took it out to the Passaic River. <clears throat> Again, post abandonment. And I did find a few from Jersey City. This was a nice clear one, Lock 21, which opened up from the Hackensack. This was another good one. I've, I've never seen this before. Work boat at uh, Hudson Boulevard Bridge in Jersey City. And Lock 22, which I think a lot of you have seen. Uh, this is a different viewpoint. <clears throat> I kind of like it because it shows the gates just closing or just opening heading into daylight on its way to New York. Okay, so that's the photographs. Some other Collada collection items. This was uh, a great find. This is a manuscript, unpublished. I guess she was working on. Everyone knows she wrote the book from 1983. This is a manuscript for a book two. And looking through it, it, it it talks about a lot of the people involved with the canal and some, some backstories. Uh, another nice document, <clears throat> the acquisition of lands in Jersey City for the canal route, 1828. So the canal had, was already open, but it was on its way to being open in Jersey City. You can see it was signed by Mr. Gilchrist who was the secretary of a uh, Morris Canal and Banking Company. Okay, so we also have some other interesting items we could show you tonight. <clears throat> DNR Canal, uh, 
assorted photograph binders. Some have negatives in there. Postcards. Uh, quite a nice to find here. The Mars Canal logbook. Uh, the boats that were passing through Lock One in uh, Stanhope, 1892 and three. <clears throat> this particular thing shows um, a lot of boats that were empty for some reason, but by then the canal was winding down. DNR of uh, plans and maps and drawings for the ownership after the abandonment. This is an actual original agreement for uh, trestle work involving the canal, 1867. Now, this is one of my favorite uh, pictures, uh, Joe's as well. 1908, a break in the canal, and you can see it's practically drained. This is right down by Canal Street, North Canal, South Canal. Uh, this actually inspired the story in one of uh, the society's newsletters. And we even have some uh, <clears throat> classic reels of Mars Canal maps. So we're also here to say that um, the Canal Society archives are on the incline, if you will, no pun intended, but we're working to, uh, to bring them out, if you will, make them better. <clears throat> so here's the website. Uh, and as Joe mentioned, um, we're working to get online access, so stay tuned. And more photos to follow on the website. There are some there now, but there'll be more to follow. And I think that's it, Jeff. Okay. So we're done. <laughs> Thank you. Are there questions? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, interesting. I I thought that the trail ran off in the fifties, but that there you go. <clears throat> mm. Filings. Yeah, okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Barbara Collada. Yeah, I did a little side research about her. I think her maiden name was Nichols. She married Stephen Collada, took the name. I found her picture in Patterson State College. I believe, but she was already married. She was not college age. She was a little older. <clears throat> I think she wound up working. She was a writer. She wrote for the school paper. So she had journalism in her background. And I believe that's what she did at AT&T, was it? Bell Labs. Now her uncle was named George Kepler. And he had taken some of the, a lot of these photos, which she got a hold of. And I guess that spurred her interest. 
And she refers to him in, in uh, her first book. So that, that's what I know about her. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Wheel pits, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> that was at, at somewhere at the turbine or? Yeah. Okay. So I guess it was in some kind of enclosure. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Roseland. Okay. So there is a street called Becker Farm Road there now. All right, so that kind of closes that loop then. Okay, I'm not too familiar with it, but okay, that's great. That, yes. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, yes. <clears throat> Oh, okay. <clears throat> not not for the war effort or anything, just to salvage it. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. They used to tell everyone to save their metal, right? And and turn it in. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Okay. Online. Yes, we'll give it a go. <clears throat> okay, I I think at one time they had towboats, but I think at one time between Newark and Kearney, I think there was a line strung across that they would actually pull themselves. I'm not sure if that's accurate, but I think that it was there at one time. <clears throat> and then when they got to Kearney, it was just a straight cut. Good question. I don't I haven't gotten that far into it. I don't think so. Uh, it's got a lot of handwritten notes and it's kind of a little haphazard. So I would say no. Yes. Oh. Yeah. They crossed the Delaware from the uh, from at Easton to Phillipsburg by using a cable and having the bow in a position to uh, take the advantage of the current, and the current against the ship would carry the uh, carry it across regardless of whether it, the, the uh, tide was coming in or going out. One more here. Can we make the photographs available online? They will be online um, eventually. <laughs> but we're working to get, if we do it right, we're working to get <clears throat> some of the Collada collection online as the first batch, if you will. So the answer to that is a probable yes. Yes. It was, okay. <clears throat> yeah, you would think. Hackensack Rivers, uh, my understanding was that the mules walked on a galley alongside the bridge and towed the boats from the bridge. Uh, a 
cable ferry would not have been feasible on either the Passaic or Hackensack because they were tidal. The water would go one way and the other way, and you really couldn't uh, uh, get a boat to go over as you could on the Delaware, where there was a constant flow in one direction. Okay, great. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. What percentage of the 102 miles do you think still exists? I mean, in some form. I mean, would it be 75? I mean, 25%, 5%? Yeah. What's, oh, that's surprising. Okay, another question. What is uh, the overflow gate in West Patterson? What is an overflow gate? I don't get it. Uh, the uh, canal in West Patterson goes along the backside of Garrett Mountain and uh, it drops off very steeply uh, from the towpath uh, downhill. And it's a precarious place to keep the water in safely. If that, uh, uh, if that, that that's part of the, the uh, 17 mile level. And if the uh, level becomes overly filled and uh, breaks a channel uh, in the towpath, uh, a huge amount of water is just gonna pour right down the side uh, and empty the whole thing and make a huge mess. So to, to make sure that didn't happen, that was a very dangerous s section with a very steep drop off uh, from the towpath. That, that was a safety valve. The water would automatically, uh, if it got be above a certain level, empty out in a controlled fashion. Is the bypass jump into the Passaic River by McBride Avenue? Is that where that is? I was trying to figure out where the water dumps in. Uh, it's a little bit far from the river, but it would have made its way down into the river. And there's no sign of that that overflow. It is, it is not extant. It's, it's, it's not visible now. Yes. closed and also the breadlock park Only museum breadlock. the breadlock park museum was closed last weekend is will they be open in october i mean why were they closed we had no and Yeah, we wanted to walk in front on the Jim and Mary Lee one, but you, there was a like a tape over the entrance of the driveway to go in, so we couldn't even. We were afraid to go in. It's all COVID. Related. It's COVID related. Yeah, okay. Are closed. Most, a lot of museums are closed. Yeah, they should really. Maybe the society should post that because we, you know, it was like almost a two-hour drive there and back, and we were disappointed. No. They did have water. They said there was a. It's closed because of water damage, but. Yeah, it was swamped out. Yeah. So. Water trail has water damage, but it never has flooded. Never happened. No. Running trail, 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 trail. We, we did get another question of what are they doing to the Lincoln Park Plain restoration and do we know who's doing it? Let me just uh, drop back. Uh, we try to keep track of whatever's going on 
across the 102 miles and we're constantly in touch with uh, try to be in touch with everybody. And I talked to Elizabeth Roy just last week. And as far as we knew, the, the, uh, the sites were open for passive recreation, not in the buildings, but you, you, could, you could certainly visit uh, Breadlock Park. You could certainly walk up and down the plane at plane nine. So I will be in contact and find out what's up. We, 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 we try to do that. Okay. COVID issues are still volatile, sorry, sorry to say. Okay, pl uh, Plane 10, Plane 10 Trail uh, is, uh, is open. Well, we walked there uh, a couple of weeks ago. They've got a brand new parking area uh, along Beaverbrook Road that allows people now to park right near the trailhead. And um, we've got uh, some new signage and a, a new sign right out at the road telling people, you know, what's going on. This is a parking lot for, for the trail. So, uh, there is a, uh, a planning grant uh, out to the uh, county uh, trails program to create a loop trail uh, along one side of the canal and then cross just below the plane and then come back along on the towpath side. So that's going to be that trail and that site is going to be expanded uh, in the next year or two years to come. These things take quite a while to go. And they are. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? We're good. I thank you again. And again, more to follow. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, hello. Yeah. So they have a, 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 a canal boat up there on display right now. Uh, and the, the, the boat was 100 feet long, which was a standard at that point. Wait, wait, this is way back now. And the, 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 the It's uh, Breadlock Park. Okay, <clears throat> I thank you again, and uh, more to follow. Thank you, John. That was really pretty cool. You actually showed some pictures that I hadn't seen before. That's pretty hard. And there's more. They say that every picture has a story. Well, there are so many stories. And there are uh, some of the pictures you saw are parts of other collections that Barbara accessed uh, that we have uh, and then their entirety in a different form in a different place. And uh, there's actually a story of the story, which is one of the even for, for even for canal nerds like me uh, delving into uh, the story of these collections is an exciting and interesting thing. So this is what we hope to be able to share with you folks, with, with the folks here and online in the future as we be able, uh, as, as we slowly go through and get our collections uh, on the database and make selected amounts of that information available um, on a website that will be linked to our website that you all know and visit occasionally. And so um, this is gonna take a long time and a big effort. It uh, probably takes some volunteers to help us accession uh, our material. We have got thousands of entries and binders that uh, Bill Moss, one of our past presidents, um, dutifully created over the years. Now, um, He's passed away, and many of the people who created those files have passed away. So um, some of our, we do have some members like Bob Goller, who is probably listening right now, who hopefully can help us make sense of all that and get it written down so that uh, silly people me like me cannot forget. So that's what it's all about, getting these things um, into a form where uh, it can be easily accessed and easily searched and then shared with other people. So we thank you all for joining us tonight. Very nice turnout. We've got about almost 30 people here tonight. Um, we've had um, over 80 people um, who were, were signed up to be here online. Uh, hopefully, uh, I think all you folks here tonight had a good time, enjoyed. 
I hope the, uh, the people who joined us via Zoom found it a good experience. And um, we'd like to hear from you, um, your thoughts about how this worked tonight, because I guess we're still going to be stuck with, with COVID situations for at least a little while longer. So we wanna know how you folks um, like to have these presentations and we'll, we'll try to do our best to do a good job for you. So thanks for coming tonight.